Hello my soccer universe! With the semi-finals upon us I thought it is time to do a little preview of these games since we have actually the break. And I want to make this preview just me talking about the semi-finals without putting up any uh, fancy calculations or graphs or whatever. Just me talking about the semi-finals and how I feel this will go. And before we look into my thoughts on to the two semifinals, uh, we have here the four semifinalists up here, as I said in the review of the quarterfinals. And no matter who of these four will win, there is a remarkable story behind it, which is something that I'm not sure I could have said on previous semifinals, to be honest, although you could always find it, but I think um, it is in some way always outstanding. Let's start with Morocco. First, they would be the first African team to win it. This is more than just winning it for the first time. This is the first time that another continent would win the World Cup, which would be an amazing feat. And of course, um, Morocco definitely uh, is representing Africa in there, in addition to the whole uh, Arab world or even Muslim world, which is also something uh, remarkable there. The uh, World Cup, of course, held for the first time in the Middle East. If it was France that would win the World Cup, this would be an, I don't want to say unprecedented because it happened before, but almost unheard of title defense. The first time since 62. The first time since 62, that 60 years ago, that the last time that a country has defended the world title. And it has happened only once before, Italy 34 and 38. And given the uh, misgivings around that first title, um, one is even willing to overlook that one. We got close a couple of times where a defending world champion reached the final. The last time was in 98, before then in 1990. Uh, those are the two that I definitely can remember now off the top of my head. And I think those were the only two recent ones, if I just go in my head through it. Um, and both of these finals were not even close that there will be a successful title defense. So have that in mind. If France pulls this off, they enter the the biggest of nations. I mean, winning three world titles is something uh, that almost no one has done. Brazil, Italy, Germany. You go into this pantheon in there. Definitely. So uh, France would enter the big nations, which are arguably should um, just have in mind that when I started watching soccer in the early 90s, France was a good nation but was not considered world class they had not won a, a world cup yet this is a very recent thing so uh just have that is something that has to be also considered but they will definitely enter the pantheon of the really 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 big nations argentina it's all about one guy messi yes they also would win a third title so everything i said for france will also apply to argentina but in in addition it would be the crowning achievement of one lionel messi who then probably could claim that at least he's the goat of his generation. Uh, how it would put in the large picture, you know, there's a Pelé who has won two World Verbal Cups and was present at two more where in one case he got injured and then they won the final. So, yeah, and the club game was not as defined as it was is nowadays. So it is really, really hard to, to compare, but it would be the crowning achievement of his career. And this would be one up over uh, his rival, although I don't think per person that's such better, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. So yes, um, it's a different story that it's probably easier for Argentina to win a World Cup than for Portugal, since Argentina already have done it twice and Portugal were not even close to them. So this is for me the big story for Arch Argentina, also that uh, the phalanx of, and this will also apply to Morocco, of European world champions would be broken uh, which yeah would be the first one in 20 years that a non-European team wins the World Cup. Which leaves us with Croatia, would also be the crowning achievement for Luka Modric and that great midfield, but I think the significance here would be that for the first time that a Eastern European team 
would win the World Cup, which is, is, is a region that is very overlooked, uh, kind of maybe put itself a little bit on the back foot uh, due to history. However, I already announced Croatia is, has to be considered uh, relative to size, probably the best country, uh, soccer country at the moment with only Uruguay in over all of his history coming closer, probably uh, overtaking them. So that is one part. Um, but I think Croatia is more, they are among the great nations right now. What they have achieved in a very short period, I mean, they have, they have now three semi-final appearances since the first time that they uh, came in, in, into the World Cup and for a small country like Croatia, this is something really, really unbelievable. They might be, after Uruguay, the smallest nation to ever win the World Cup. Incredible feat. And I decided for this video to wear Croatia to give them the do that I didn't probably give them in the previous review video, but I want to uh, show that Croatia is probably one of the bigger stories in there. So let's go through the two semi-finals. Uh, the first one played on Tuesday evening, uh, at least in Europe here, is between Argentina and Croatia. And just by the numbers, if I look at my predictions, I had Ar Argentina 72% favorite. Now, I honestly gotta tell you, I find this a much, much, much closer game personally. I understand why the ratings are where they are. It is just because there's a computer algorithm behind it. There's also the bookmakers also and, and, and so on. It is sexier to pick Argentina. Hence, you get uh, shorter odds and hence the rating goes up. Argentina also have been picking up more points on a regular basis and have a whole lot of history behind them. So it's not a surprise that Argentina on these measures are favored. However, if I look at it currently, this is a really, really hard match to call. First off, Croatia's never say die attitude reminds me very much of Real Madrid, what Real Madrid did early on. Croatia is a team that you have to beat over and over and over again. Uh, they are like the uh, vampires or werewolves of soccer at the moment. You really have to make sure you're putting them away. And this is where my problem comes because Argentina have shown a proclivity of not putting opponents away. Both against Australia and against the Netherlands, they had the game squarely won. There was nothing that should ever have happened. You couldn't see Australia coming back, you couldn't see the Netherlands coming back. And just by a free goal, it all went pear-shaped, almost. It all went pear-shaped. And I would argue that the Dutch killed themselves. I did this in a review video. If the Dutch would have continued Moving forward, I think they might have as well won that game. It was that it was really that close, but they let our, our Argentina back back in, who then could uh, recollect themselves, rally, and um, win that game eventually uh, on penalties. So yeah, uh, this to me is one of the. It's really really hard to say. I think for for Australia, Croatia. Um, Tiredness could play a factor, but then this is a nation that uh, has played in every knockout stage uh, uh, an overtime period, except for the final in 2018. Even the Euros, the one knockout game that had was an, an over, went to overtime. They have have a real talent to getting games into overtime. They have a real talent of winning penalty shootouts. Croatia has done what no nation has done before, winning two sh penalty shoots in a row twice. Before that, only Argentina in 1990 could win two penalty shoots in a row. Usually, the pattern is you win one, you lose the next one. Croatia has done it twice. True, the one in 2018 was a teeny bit of a fluke because uh, it would have happened anyway because both Croatia and Russia beat their opponents in a round of 16 before they met and went to another, another penalty shooter. Still, winning two penalty shooters in one tournament is the rarest of feats. Doing it twice shows spirit, courage, guts. This is also how Croatia play. Not only do they win penalty shootouts, in every single game where their goals were scored, they went down. 
they always had to come back. And the same goes also for those knockout games in 2018. They always found themselves down and always had to come back. Just this is a team that has a never say die ad attitude, has probably the best midfield left in the competition and relies on a youngish core of players that all come from Dinamo Zagreb. So there's a certain familiarity to it as well. And a remarkable thing for Croatia for me was is whenever they made changes that they didn't get worse necessarily. It actually, they kept kind of the level. That is remarkable. It is really remarkable. It makes this game so hard to call against an Argentina team that honestly uh, has been rather average and relies on the brilliance of one Lionel Messi. Lautaro Martinez had a horrible tournament so far. I guess if he would have scored one of those against Saudi Arabia, it would have gone uh, different. But again, it is basically you have Messi, Di Maria is out, Lautaro Martinez has not a good uh, tour to the tournament. So who do you rely on uh, else? Yeah, Enzo Fernandez is coming maybe a little bit into his own to give them a little bit uh, a different way. I thought that the Powell played overall relatively well. But then we are really, uh, Alvarez probably, potentially could do something. Uh, I mean, there was the Molinas and so on in India that score goals. So uh, there's always a little, uh, and McAllister. But overall, this is a rather average team that uh, does some good teamwork. It has tested to be said, but also has a, a penchant to throw away their nerves when things get really, really hard. And then it needs a Messi to have this brilliant pass or the brilliant goal or the nerve uh, to create it. It's not a, that is where I really, I really have doubts that Argentina can win this tournament because they are not resilient enough. They have not been a good team, but they have great individuals and the story would be messy. So for me, this is a game, I am, it's really, really hard to call for me. I have maybe a slight leaning towards Croatia because of all what I've seen, but I'm not sure how much tiredness plays a factor in Croatia's run. Going to the other semi-final. Um, it's, of course, the other big support team. I did not mention that Argentina, of course, have the huge support in the Lucille State Stadium, which will be, again, be a mini Bombonera, I guess. Uh, although the Bombonera is smaller than the Lucille Stadium, but it's a different story, but you know what, what I mean. Morocco will have amazing support in Alcor as well. Uh, there, is no, there is no doubt about that. Alcor are the darlings of the locals. Morocco, uh, as many praises as I've heaped now on Croatia, I could do the very same thing for Morocco. Uh, they have a similar never say die attitude. Their defense has not conceded in ages. In ages. They have numbers that are so reminiscent of Italy of 2006, it's frightening. The one thing that they don't have, though, is like Italy 2006, Italy were scoring goals. Morocco is scoring goals, but not as free-flowing as Italy did back then. They don't have the striker or the strike first up front. That's the one thing that's a little bit missing for, for uh, Morocco. But their tackling discipline is second to none in this tournament. They are absolutely well-organized, a well-oiled machine. They have Bunu. Probably uh, the second most impressive goalkeeper after Livakovic with all the penalty saves that he had to... Livakovic was a little bit more in spotlight, but Bruno came up with the saves when he needed to. You have really great talents, uh, especially with Amrabat and Hakimi. Uh, also in Naziri uh, can find his own, so I think there's a lot of there. Also, you play about against the former colonial power which is something we had before. It might well play and um, ex give an extra edge in motivation. On the other side, this team seems to be spent. They have many injuries. You don't know who is going to get fit. Uh, they played already with a makeshift defense and that game against Portugal really felt to the point where if Portugal scores the late equalizer, Portugal goes on to win that game. That is the one thing where Morocco does worry me. However, if they stay disciplined, can frustrate France, hit them on account, contract, I can see them winning this. However, I think that France is a level up from Portugal. France 
has been not a better team against England, but when England played France, it was pretty clear that those are the two best teams left in the competition. One of them had to win, uh, and while England might have had overall a little bit of an advantage in play, it showed also how deadly this French B team is. Yes, I said it, B team. With all the injuries out, how many French people were they? Oh, we're not gonna go any anywhere because uh, we're missing this, 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 this guy. At least we could make a whole other other, other team. You still have a pretty darn good team, and I I would argue the best team in the tournament left. Overall, France on the whole, maybe some defensive frailties here and there, but it's very very complete, and you have the additional star power. You have. You have this, um, the overall equality, plus you have the star power from Argentina. But you have a better team behind it. You have Kylian Mbappe. And what the English game has proven that even if you take all the effort to neutralize Mbappe, you have other players to worry, worry about. And we have the underrated star of this tournament in Antoine Griezmann, who has been absolutely brilliant in the shadows. He's playing this uh, mixture between an 8 and a 10, very much uh, hard work, very athletic-like, although he never played um, this as athletic, but hard-nosed work, grinding it out, going for the balls, distributing is having the assists, and, and so on. He's not scoring, but he is doing everything else behind that. He keeps kind of this midfield going uh, that a young Germany is uh, running, and yes, uh, there are some questions behind the defensive looking, especially at Upamecano, who is always a little bit da da da. And as much as I love Theo Hernandez going forward, his defensive abilities I know very well for Milan are not really there. But his strength is going forward. The big challenge for France will be to break down the Moroccan defense, and especially since Morocco is pressing high. And here is where France need to do what Portugal could not do. Use the speed of your one-star player to run behind this defense. I don't see France, maybe I do, France also is not, uh, as, as is with Georgia, I mean, is not afraid to take a long-range shot. So, I mean, they have the complete arse or arsenal. Uh, but France has to get behind the defensive line, so in between the lines to create something and use speed and power, and they have that. Um, the longer this stays nil-nil, the more it will go for Morocco, but I, I have an inkling that this might be a step too far for Morocco. It has a little bit of the South Korea 2002, where when they played against Germany, they were all spent. That's what I fear for Morocco. So, um, I honestly think I'm very much leaning France in that one, that they get this done. But I would not be unhappy if Morocco gets that done. Now, if we look at final pairings, and I always said it would be great stories, whoever wins it. Uh, again, for me, before we talk about final pairings, uh, for me, France is the most complete team. So, if you like like I usually do, that the best or one of the best teams win the World Cup, it's really hard to look past France. I would actually go even so far to say that I like what Croatia is doing on a team level more than Argent what Argentina is doing. I think the two European teams are better teams in that sense. I would say put him Argentina fourth in that cat category because what Morocco is doing is super, super impressive the tactical discipline. What I'm missing from Morocco, in a way, as I said, is uh, they are very sturdy on the back, very organized. I, I love this. They're doing everything there. I have a feeling they have a little bit of punch missing going forward. That's maybe the one thing I miss about Morocco. But, you know, um, if they make it to the final, great. Now, let's look at possible pairings. I mean, uh, Argentina-France is probably, I don't want to say even every neutral's favorite, but, you know, uh, if you want to have a big name final, that's your big name final. And up until recently, I would have probably said, uh, this is where this is going to end up with. Argentina Morocco would be the one with the biggest fan bases around, although I'm not sure how many will make it into the stadium. But, you know, those are the two best supported teams left in the comp comp competition. And I have, to, I have to say that both European teams will have to overcome this handicap that uh, they are not being cheered for. 
So in that sense, Argentina against Morocco would be cool. I also size and I heard that Bunu, the goalkeeper, is a huge Argentinian uh, soccer fan. That would be interesting. So that would be a nice one. Croatia moving on against France, a replay of the 2018 final. Uh, as I said, this happened once before. Uh, would have something interesting. I think that Croatia is probably the one team that France should fear the most if it just goes on field. I know the public and the crowd noise could play something, but I honestly I think if this France team should be settled enough to weather that. I think what Croatia with their never say that attitude has to offer, this is something that could hurt France more. Again, tiredness will play a factor. Yes, it also affects a little bit France, but I have the feeling that France can handle this much better. And then we have the underdog final, uh, Croatia against Morocco, which probably will, would be the most fun final of all. We would have a new world champion. Won't be a pretty final. Um, so let's recap for the games. I actually know, and I don't expect either of the games to be uh, rather visually appealing, especially the Argentina-Croatia game. They both like to neutralize each other and hit, um, you know, uh, take away the strengths of the other team while trying to emphasize on each other. And, you know, we saw it with Ar Argentina Holland, not a great game result. I would expect something similar. And then it needs to be one of the superstars needs to strike. That's how I see this game going. Uh, while maybe I have a slight leaning towards Argentina in the head. Um, I can I when with the more I replay this in my head, the more I see Croatia winning this one. The other one I already said, I expected a little bit of a defensive struggle, where I am curious what, how Morocco will play against France, who are, um, you know, how to say? I mean, England is very, very broadly uh, much. England and France were much broader in offense than like Portugal are. There are, there are many different. You have your uh, Mbappé, you have your Dembélé, you have Griezmann, you have Giroud. All, all of them offer something different. If you take one out, the other one will step in. On the other side, the French defense have been uh, kind of showing a few frailties where Morocco well can hit. I still see this more like a tunnel for France going forward. So. That's how I see those two games going. I think that France will need to break them down. Maybe they can do that. So yeah, these are my thoughts on those. Um, just a little bit going wild and all over a little bit. Um, it's something I wonder about to do as far as how I will report on this. I would love to do uh, a video for each, um, but I'm not sure if on Wednesday morning I will have the or Wednesday morning or Tuesday evening. I will have the time to do so. So we have to see how it goes. I might do a big review video like I did for the quarterfinal. Any case, how do you think uh, this um, will go? Who do you think will make the final? Who will win it all? I would love to know. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did so. I'll subscribe to my channel if you see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!